Hey friends, welcome to the Aeroponic Tower channel. Today's video, we're gonna jump right in and talk all things sprouting. So I get this question a lot. It's something I do all the time. I have some thoughts about sprouting that are a little bit different than you may have heard um, from other people or other online sources. And I sprout differently than most people do in the content world that I see online. And I'm gonna explain why and how I got to sprout the way that I sprout. So let's dive right in. I'm gonna keep this short and simple and hopefully equip you guys to start growing your own sprouts. They're incredibly nutritious for you. It's the fastest way to start growing some of your own food and it's so affordable. So let's dive in. So first we need to talk about supplies and you can find a link to everything I mentioned below in the description. These are my tried and true methods after, oh, well, let's see at least 15 years of sprouting. But before we dive in, let me just tell you a little bit about my journey with sprouting. So my sprouting journey began when I was trying to reverse, when I was trying to take back charge of my health, the modern system had failed me and I was looking for alternative ways to reverse some things that were going on with my body. I wrote all about this in my ebook. You can find the description to that below. And I learned about sprouting. I went to a raw vegan meetup and we talked all things sprouting and we learned how to sprout in jars. And that is the most common method you will see, sprouting in jars, because it's super simple. The materials to do it are very inexpensive. And I will say it's a great way to get started, but there are some serious flaws with jar sprouting for me personally. Not the case for everybody. I know people who've been jar sprouting for 15 years and don't have any issues with it. So it, this is a preference just like gardening. I tend to garden a little bit different than a lot of people and it works for me. So we all have different methods. There isn't one right or wrong way, but I will explain why jar sprouting was not the best option for me. So after that raw vegan meetup, I went and bought some supplies and started sprouting. And I struggled to get my sprouts dry enough. I struggled, struggled with the strainer. I had chosen that one on the top of my jars because some seeds were so small they were falling out of it and some were so large that the skin over the seed, once it fell off, was getting gummed up inside because it wasn't able to wash out. So then I discovered these jar lids where you had different sizes. There were three different sizes. If they're still available, I'll link them below. I'm not sure if they're available anymore. But those allowed me to start, allowed me to soak my seeds with a small lid with fine drainage. And then once my seeds started to sprout, I could increase the hole size, the drainage size of the holes by switching to another lid, which would allow me to cleanse them a little bit better. And then the largest one would allow for bigger seeds that had bigger seed coverings, seed skins. I could wash a lot of those seed skins out, which just made for a better sprouting and a better tasting product in the end for me personally. So I used those for a while. Actually, my husband and I designed a sprouting. At the time, you couldn't find uh, anything to hold your jars at an angle, so they drain properly. And some say so they get airflow, but I'm gonna address that a little bit as well. And so we actually designed one and we were selling these kits. You could get three jars, lids, sprouting seeds, and this drainage holder for your three jars. So we did that for a long time, but I just, found myself not wanting to sprout a lot because the end product to me had a murky water smell to it and a little bit of a murky water taste. And I didn't like that. So I tried everything. I tried rinsing them in lemon juice after. I tried putting them in a salad spinner and rinsing them in lemon juice and water and trying to spin out. And I just couldn't get that smell off of my sprouts. And if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, if you're brand new to this, it's just like a, when you let water sit a little bit too long and it's got a murky smell to it, that's what it was like. And I tried everything. I tried less seeds, more seeds, different water, different size jars, all the things. And I just couldn't get away from that. So I really stopped sprouting for years, actually. I know they're super healthful. So I would get in the mode, I would sprout. I would get discouraged because I hated that smell and that murkiness so much that I would stop and that went on for years. And then I decided that there had to be a better way. 
Uh, a lot of things changed since then. Now you can go on Amazon, you can find all sorts of those little jar things. There's all sorts of companies out there that make jar rests for sprouting and jar kits and sprouting kits and all the things. Because sprouting became a lot more popular over the last few years. So I went on a hunt and decided I was gonna master this and I started to try container sprouting. So instead of doing jars, I was trying to do containers. So I started with my own homemade things like clay pot saucers, don't do that, glass containers. And I would put a little piece of cheesecloth over the top to see if that would work. And obviously those things, you could, I could sprout and get things to sprout, but it didn't solve the issue of me wanting clean, fresh sprouts that had no smell. Really, that was the goal. I wanted sprouts that had no smell to them aside from what the plant smells like. Finally, I came across a product that looked promising and I'm gonna show you guys what that is. And that is these sprouting, stackable, sprouting, I don't know what you call them, trays. And I gave these a try and this solved the problem. So this is how I sprout everything now. And I'm gonna talk about what I sprout. There's only one thing I, that doesn't sprout well in here. And honestly, I have not been able to get it to sprout well anywhere. So once I talk about that thing, if you know how to master sprouting this particular item, please post in the comments because I would love to hear your thoughts and your methods for it. But this works for everything else. And the coolest thing about this and I'm gonna show you guys some characteristics of this, is that there is zero smell. It smells like sweet, delicious plants. And that was just all I was going for. Zero smell, like there's no murky, I can't even smell water. You know, water has a smell, you know what I'm talking about? Like, I don't even smell that. They just smell like plants. So, before we dive in to this, let me talk about where I get my seeds. And then I'm gonna explain how this works, why I think it works, and then exactly how to do it yourself. Again, this will be linked below, so you can grab one and start your own sprouting journey if you wanna do the, if you wanna sprout the way I sprout. So, seeds. I go with a few different varieties. Sometimes it just depends where I'm shopping. If I need something and I happen to be ordering, something else from that store, I'll grab seeds. So I have a couple of different varieties. Um, the Star West brand comes from Azure Standard. That is where I buy our food in bulk. I will put a link to that below. It's a co-op, they show up once a month. I like to get sprouting seeds from them because I'm already ordering from them and they're in these Mylar packages. Mylar is gonna keep moisture and light off of your seeds, which is going to preserve them for longer. You're gonna be able to keep them longer. The other company I frequent, this would be the second most frequented company, is True Leaf. And I love True Leaf. Again, we have good packaging that's waterproof and light proof. The cool thing with True Leaf is you can buy smaller packages. So this is a significantly smaller than the one I had to get from Azure. So you can buy smaller volumes. I think you can, and sometimes Azure is hit or miss. Sometimes you can buy smaller volumes, like four ounces, but a lot of times you have to buy it by the pound. So I can get smaller amounts. Also, True Leaf has an incredible variety to choose from. So if you wanna branch out and add different colors, I'm a huge fan of diversity in your diet. So when I am juicing off my towers, I'm taking 15 different leaves of 15 different plants because that is gonna offer just so many more nutrients than if you mono eat a bunch of kale every single day over and over again. So I love True Leaf because they have so many varieties good packaging, good pricing, and you can buy them in smaller lots, which allows you to try different things. Here is Handy Pantry. I think these are from True Leaf too. I may be wrong. I don't even remember where these came from. I've been happy with them. But again, the problem with this is the packaging. Light can get in here, which is gonna degrade our seeds a little bit faster. And so that's it, really the main two places that I like to purchase are Azure Standard and True Leaf Market. So once we have our sprouting seeds and we have our sprouting containers, then we're just gonna go through a simple process to start them. And these containers come with everything you need to grow your sprouts from start to finish. 
Now the one flaw with these trays is you only get a bottom tray, a lid, ooh, a lid, and two sprouting trays. And for me, that wasn't enough. So I have two of these kits. Two of these kits allows me to grow a wide variety of sprouts and consistently interval plant my sprouts so that we have sprouts to put on the table at every meal if we choose. So two is ideal. I would say the weakest link here is two sprouting trays really isn't enough for a good interval planting method. You really need like three or four with a backup just in case, because sometimes you may over sprout, which I did that you're gonna see, where you just put too many in there and then you need to move some to a different tray. So having the extra trays is actually really, really helpful. So I recommend grabbing two. This makes it more of an investment. This is definitely a little more expensive than jar sprouting, but really after you buy the jars and if you buy some sort of tray to hold your jars and the lids, we're probably getting pretty close and I just find these to be way better. This is stainless steel, it's safe. There are less expensive varieties out there and so feel free to search those and read up on the reviews. After reading the reviews, I found this to be the safest one to put my food in, the most durable, and I bought it once, I'll have it forever. These are not going to break. There's nothing in here that can fall apart or even if I drop them and dent them, it doesn't matter. It's not going to affect my sprouting. So I'm gonna have these forever. So we have our bottom tray. And what you're gonna do is put your seeds in the bottom. And then we're gonna fill this with water and we're gonna soak them. Now here's the other issue. If you only have one of these, then you can only start one set of seeds at a time. So by having two, you get two bottom trays and you can start two at one time. And then once these move to the sprouting trays, you've got the tray again to start another one. If you only buy one of these, then start one set of seeds, move them to a tray, then you can start another set. So and the duration of how long you soak your seeds will depend on the type of seeds they are. On the packaging, it'll often tell you how long to sprout them, or it'll often tell you how long to soak them. Anything under 24 hours is fine. I have found I rarely ever follow specific instructions. It's more just how it fits into my life. If you start to go too long, they're gonna ferment and then eventually go bad. So definitely don't put them in here and forget about them. But if the packaging says eight hours and you go 12, that is not going to harm them and you will be totally fine. It's one of the uses for this tray. It has a second purpose as well. Keep it covered while they're soaking. Once your seeds are ready and they're done soaking, we're gonna move them to our sprout tray. Very fine screen mesh made out of stainless steel, which is nice. Super, super tiny holes. This goes against what we've been taught about with jar sprouting. And that is where I think there might be some flaws in the jar sprouting where this has solved those. So teeny, teeny, tiny holes. All we're gonna do is take our soaked seeds and we're gonna thinly spread them out on our screen. Now, you don't want a double layer of these. We don't want them piled on top of each other. This is a smaller amount we're going for, just a thin layer with some space in between them because they are going to expand. And if you end up doing too many, that's fine. After they start sprouting, you can move some to another tray. If you do too less, there's no harm there. But you don't want to go too crazy with this. You're going to have to play with that. I can't give you exact measurements because all seeds are different. Lentils are going to expand way differently than a clover sprout. So you're going to have to just experiment with that a little bit. With smaller seeds, tends to be a couple of tablespoons. And you'll get the hang of this the more you do it. After our seeds are on our tray, we're gonna put the lid back on. We're gonna stack them. On our drip tray. So now when we add water, and I'll talk about how to do that, to these, it's gonna drain into here. So here is where things get a little bit different than jar sprouting. What we're gonna do is once or twice a day, we're gonna take this off the drip tray hold it under the sink and use our sink sprayer nozzle and we're gonna spray them and give them some water. Let them drain for a second, put them back on the drip tray, put the lid on and let them sit. Ideally, they say to rinse your sprouts 
twice a day. I will tell you, I'm more like a once a day person. And with this system, I have found it works totally fine. I have even gone two days without watering them and not had any problems with when the lid is on. Now, once you take the lid off, they're gonna dry out faster. And so that changes things a little bit. But that's all we're gonna do there. Now, if I'm doing a couple of trays, I'm gonna rinse that one, put it on here. What that allows is the top one's gonna drip into this one. This one's gonna drip into the bottom and the excess. And we just have a lot more moisture in this system, but it's not on our plants. The moisture is being collected down here, out of the way. And then every time I go to rinse these, I'm just cleaning out this bottom tray and making sure it stays nice and clean and fresh. Couple more things, but honestly, guys, that's it. That's, that is sprouting with these trays. And I have heard you need airflow to sprout. I sprout in a closed system and they do amazing. So take that as you will. I find this works amazing. I am not opening these to give them airflow. I will tell you when I'm gonna open them and we'll talk about that in a minute. And this, with this method also, you will notice the roots are coming out the bottom. We have this teeny tiny little screen. And so when you go to pull these out, we're gonna pull them out like this. And we have our delicious sprouts. They taste perfectly clean. They're not wet. They're not sitting in water. They're just super fresh and ready to put on the table. So I actually eat out of these trays. I have a salad over here. Putting them in my food and then just putting the lid back on and letting them continue to sprout. I continue to wash them and do the things. Now, of course, we get to a point where things go bad. Everything does. So you gotta know when that point is and that comes from experience. But that's how we harvest them. And so that keeps from, again, that soppy water issue that you can sometimes have when you're jar sprouting. So I forgot to water these on day two. And if you look, it may look like there is mold in these fuzzy little white things. If that ever happens to you, it is not mold or fungus or anything. It is actually the roots of the plants. When they get thirsty, they will create this little fuzzy, root system along the main roots and it just means they're thirsty so if you ever see that don't panic they're not moldy they are perfectly fine they just need a good drink the most amazing thing about this system is there are no fruit flies so if you have fruit flies this time of year especially in the summer spring and summer it can be miserable and anytime you have anything you're doing with water they are there and if you get fruit flies, what they're doing is laying eggs in your sprouts and in any food that has water in it. So if you see fruit flies around your sprouts, that means you have fruit fly larva in your sprouts, which is pretty gross. These are closed systems. There's no way for a fruit fly to get in here because I don't have that airflow thing going on. My straining system is closed. It's sealed up. And so fruit flies don't mess with these. They're not even attracted to them because this isn't a wet system. Nothing about this feels wet, even though I'm growing food using water. So that is really um, very, very important in our home to not have the fruit flies on the food we're eating. So this prevents that. That's one of the main huge bonuses of it. And before we move on to the very last thing I wanna talk about, these are some lentils, mung beans, and I think I did add zuki bean sprouts. And so mung bean sprouts are those long sprouts we see in Asian food. Those do really well in here. You can do them just by themselves. We've got lentils sprout really well, and they do amazing. And you're gonna see, this is a white sprout. These are thick roots that we're going for. We're sprouting them, it's up to you. You can sprout them for three days when you're doing lentils or 10. It just depends, do you want a lot of roots in your food or do you want more of that crunchy bean? That's what the distance in sprouting when you're doing lentils and beans, it's really about texture and flavor that you're going for. So that's what these are. And these stay covered on the system full time. But something like this, which is a red clover sprout. You can see it is yellow. My little sprouts, 
They are not leggy. So leggy is something that happens when sprouts grow without light. They'll get real tall and thin. They don't do that in the sprouting system. They, these actually get nice thick roots, which is incredible. I don't know why. It just, I think it's because the thin leggy part, this is the roots. And so this is the meatier part grows on the top and the thin feeder roots go out the bottom. And so you don't have just one leggy stringy thing, which often when you're sprouting in jars, that's what you're getting. You're getting these long strings. These are meatier when we sprout this way, which I find to be really incredible. But the downside here, and the thing you may notice is these are yellow. They're yellow because I haven't exposed them to sunlight. Now, when we expose them to sunlight, we're gonna get the chlorophyll. That's what turns them green. We definitely want some chlorophyll. I think that's what it's turning them green. That's my theory anyway, could be totally wrong. But the minute I take this lid off, they are going to start changing colors. So between now and the next four, six, eight hours, these are gonna go from yellow to green. So I'm gonna show you guys that because I'm ready to take the lid off. These are done sprouting. These are gonna go into our bodies and into the fridge where we will consume them. The lentils, same thing, they're done sprouting. So I'm gonna take everything out, put it in containers and put it in the fridge to eat. I mentioned that we eat out of the containers and let them continue to grow. Absolutely can do that. There is going to come a point though when they start to get too big, they'll start to develop their true leaves and then they're gonna get tough. And then we've bypassed the nutritional components we're going for and we're moving into more like microgreens and because we're not growing these in soil we may start to actually lose nutrients in that so we're going for sprouting seeds um, and again that window of when you're ready to put them in the fridge you'll know when you've gone too far they're still edible but then you'll know like oh okay that's too far and you'll make sure to put them in the fridge a little bit earlier the next time